The likelihood of a widespread banking collapse is rising as we stand on the verge of a historic financial crisis. The American banking system is a house of cards that is a mile high. Every day, it passes by. It looks wobblier and more susceptible to crashing down all around us. With the central bank intervening in private banking institutions and soaring interest rates leading businesses to default on their loans, it is turning into a very scary scenario. For many years, American banking institutions have been slowly deteriorating. It's not as safe as we'd like to think for our money. Banks are overflowing into our system. State banks, multinational banks, and organizations that offer investment banking services with both private and public banking services are all available. For a very long period, our society accepted almost without question the notion that American banks set the standard for how strong a bank should be. Nonetheless, that notion is probably tied to the myth that the United States is the world's superpower. We must accept the reality that our nation has been losing influence on the world economic arena, and that this decline also affects our banking industry. It's challenging to grasp the basics of banking. We don't generally think of banks as businesses, but that's precisely what they are, and they have the same potential for failure as any other company. It goes without saying that no country in the world wants its citizens to believe that its banks are prone to failing. They propagate the idea that our banks are worthless institutions because of this, but a number of signs in the data tell us otherwise. For instance, not a single U.S. bank has been on the list of the safest offshore banks over the past five years, with one exception, the fact that we nationalized the banking sector and that the central bank now regulates the movement and supply of funds to private institutions is a significant factor in this. The government realized that a single bank failure may start a catastrophic financial crisis as a result of the market's interconnectivity following the 2008 debacle that led to the collapse of banks. In those situations, central bankers acted as lenders of last resort. Excessive private sector borrowing was transferred to the public sector balance sheet, and massive money printing allowed our economy to recover. The federal government then established a strategy to defend banks, despite you might believe that because the government is defending banks, your money is safe. No, it isn't like that. Four out of ten U.S. banks failed during the previous financial crisis or requested government aid, but nobody cared about the people. Instead, everyone was focused on preventing the closure of these large corporations. That indicates that something is seriously wrong if our government needs to add more help to make sure something is running smoothly. The Federal Reserve's actions and governmental rules are still raising concerns today. A recent example is the record-breaking money printing that increased our money supply by trillions of dollars and sparked the biggest inflation crisis in 41 years. When a bank produced excessive amounts of money from nothing in the past, eventually someone would notice, and a bank run would occur. Yet when a central bank grants permission for all banks to act in the same manner, the likelihood of that happening decreases because doing so turns a transient or local issue into a systemic one. Private banking issues can become systemic if the Fed uses its preferred technique of perpetual money printing to address them. It's somewhat comparable to how the government approaches the issue of forest fires. The specialists kept putting out fires fast, which offered an immediate and obvious benefit. But the delayed and forgotten result of doing so is that it allows decades worth of dead wood to collect. Now, a fire may start once every century. The conflagration, or put another way, the Fed's measures don't address the problem's underlying causes. It merely applies a band-aid to a wound that is infected. Due to this, before the Federal Reserve System was established, what one expert has dubbed an unsound banking system greatly endangered our savings. We adopted sound banking, which meant that against demand deposits, bankers would hold a hundred reserve. They could only receive the revenues of time deposits, not demand deposits, and they kept one ounce of gold in their vault for every one ounce of notes they created. Currently, banknotes issued by these institutions cannot be redeemed for a commodity like gold. We only have the law to support the banking industry, because banknotes must be considered legal tender. That is to say, rules passed in 1934 to restore public faith in commercial banks, not sound business operations, give security against bank runs. The U.S. government instituted the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC. 
Now, currently, almost all big U.S. banks are FDIC insured. That means up to $250,000 per depositor is insured in the case that something happens to your money in an FDIC insured bank. You are all right till you exceed that amount. The problem is FDIC insurance covers about $90.3 trillion of deposits, but the institution has assets of only $116 billion. That's about one cent on the dollar, and the fact that the Fed controls capital flow shows that there's little money left. So what happens when one of the biggest banks in the US goes down? In theory, you would be entitled to up to 250000 However, there's no way to make up for anybody. You've lost on top of that amount, and the promise that the central bank will cover up the potential money losses you may suffer in a private banking institution. Over the years, the government has used banks as a source of financing. It has compelled and encouraged US banks to make loans to support businesses. But as the nation moves towards a deep and lengthy recession, many of those loans are now failing or will soon fail, increasing pressure on American banks. When borrowers are unable to pay back their loans, these institutions no longer receive the same level of protection as before. Banks will face a major challenge if a jump in the number of customers defaulting on bank loans keeps rising. But ultimately, it would be the common American who would pay for these rising loans. You won't actually own the money in your bank account, which may surprise a lot of folks out there. Once money is deposited at the bank, it ceases to be your property and becomes a promise from the bank to return you. This responsibility is uninsured. You technically are a creditor of the bank, which implies a bank bailout would probably cause you to lose everything. When the current economic downturn accelerates, a bank will bail out by taking money from its creditors, which includes all of its regular depositors. Millions of Americans are about to find this out the hard way. The New York Times reports that major banks are saving billions as they prepare for a downturn. Banks have kept more cash on hand since 2008 to protect themselves from the crisis. Yet, according to a December assessment from the Financial Stability Board, the average exposure to leverage loans and collateralized loan obligations, or CLOs, for the 30 safest U.S. banks was almost 60% of their available capital. Almost 100% of the capital of small packs is made up of CLOs. Their liabilities may quickly exceed their assets if the leveraged loan market crashes. To put it simply, they will take your money in order to restock their resources and keep the institution from failing. With so many businesses struggling, the US banking system can become an insult, and very rapidly policymakers know how bad the problem is. Stock markets will eventually collapse under the weight of their unrealistic expectations and record values, and you can be confident that your bank will fail alongside a financial crisis because the system will be unable to sustain any catastrophic failure of any United States banks. It's nearly a given that whatever a central banker or politician says won't happen will eventually happen, and most likely quite soon. As the proverb goes, believe nothing until it has been formally rejected, most individuals are unaware of what actually occurs when the banking system fails, let alone how to get ready. But making a wise investment decision is essential to prevent your money from falling victim to a widespread banking collapse as we draw closer to it. Closing your US bank account and searching elsewhere would be a better choice for you. If you don't move quickly, you run the risk of losing everything since time is running out and the stakes are too high. With that, we have reached the end of this video. If you like this video, then make sure to hit the like button. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. For more videos like this, click on the links you see on the screen. We will be back with another video. Until then, stay safe.